Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Indian Trail Presbyterian Church's virtual worship service this week. This fourth Sunday of Lent, as we are making our way through the Lenten season toward Holy Week to the great celebration of resurrection at Easter. Lots going on here at Indian Trail Presbyterian Church during the Lenten and uh, Easter seasons. Please uh, take a look at our website, our Facebook page, um, our emails, and participate as you are able. If you'd like more information, you can email us at the link below this video, and we'll get that information to you. Let us begin our worship this week with a prayer of adoration. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you have made us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Give us purity of heart. Give us strength of purpose that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will. No weakness hinder us from keeping your will. So that in your light we may see, see clearly and in your service find perfect freedom. As we encounter your written word, your proclaimed word, your living word by the power of your Holy Spirit this day, move us and change us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, we are continuing our worship series, uh, Five Months with Jesus, and during this Lenten season, the five weeks of Lent, we're looking at some of the lessons that Jesus teaches us about our Christian spirituality, about our spiritual lives as God's people. This week, we're going to be considering one of the petitions of the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. And as a companion text to that petition, we're going to look at some of Jesus's words in Luke's gospel. Let us listen now for a word from God. Luke chapter 12 Verses 22 through 31. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow will be thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink. And do not keep worrying, for it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things. And your Father knows you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom. And all these things will be given you as well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we come to the petition, give us this day our daily bread. And I must confess to you that in some ways I feel a little unqualified to preach on this petition. Give us our daily bread because the truth is I have never experienced something that millions of people in this world have experienced and regularly experience. I've never wondered if I would actually have my next meal. I've never wondered if I would actually have daily bread. As a child, I knew that my parents sometimes struggled. I saw them around the kitchen table with bills and, and checkbooks and trying to make things work. I heard their conversations. I knew we weren't wealthy. I knew some of our neighbors had more than we did. But I also knew we weren't poor. I never thought we were poor because I also had friends who had so much less than we did. 
I never worried if I was going to have a place to live. I never worried if I'd come home in the afternoons and not have something to eat for supper. As adults, my wife and I have sometimes had some financial struggles. We've had challenges. We've had debt. But we've always had a comfortable place to live. We've always had heat. We've always had food on the table. The closest I've ever come to having to worry about my daily bread, uh, and still I didn't worry about whether I'd have a meal or not, but the closest I've ever come was my first year of seminary. We had a meal plan, of course, but the meal plan did not cover most of the meals for the weekend. We were on our own for the weekend. I had a part-time job, but I didn't make a lot of money, and so there were weekends when I did not have much cash. I didn't have a, a credit card at the time, and so some of us would go to a place in Decatur, Georgia called 350 Pizza. Now, as you can imagine, they had a pizza for $3.50, but they also had, more importantly, they had, for $3.50, you could get a bucket of spaghetti and meat sauce, a bucket of spaghetti. And that bucket would feed me for the weekend for $3.50. Now, there were a couple of weekends that I can remember when I actually didn't even have that much cash. And as I said, I didn't have a, a regular credit card. The only thing I had was an Amico card for gas. And so there were at least two weekends I can remember when I had to go to the convenience store and get cheese crackers and Vienna sausages on my um, Amico gas card so that I'd have something to eat that weekend. But I knew I would be able to pay that off at the end of the month with my part-time job. I knew I was going to be able to eat. I never worried that I would not have something to eat on any day of my life. This prayer must be a powerful prayer for people who aren't assured of their daily bread, for people who do live with that fear and anxiety of knowing whether or not they'll have enough to eat or their family will have enough to eat on this day. But what about the rest of us? If we don't have to face the fear of getting our daily bread, or if we haven't had to live with that anxiety for a long time, how do we pray it? If we take this prayer only literally about being about physical bread, if we take it at face value only, give us this day our daily bread, then it could seem like quite a perfunctory prayer for those of us who don't really have to worry about that. I'll give you a hint. I, I put that word perfunctory in there, and then I thought, do I really know what that means? <laughs> Am I using it the right way? So I looked it up, and, and actually I was using it the right way, but I, I'm glad I looked it up because I love the definition I found. Perfunctory means something carried out with a minimum effort or reflection. And I thought, how many times have I prayed that petition of the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread? How many times have I prayed that prayer in a perfunctory manner, with minimal thought, minimal effort, or reflection. How many times have I just ridden right over it without considering what it means? And if it only means physical bread, then I can do that. However, if it is, as I think it is, a much broader prayer, if it's a prayer about everything that we need this day, if it's a prayer for God to give us what we need, yes, physical, uh, what we need for physical sustenance, but also a prayer for what we need emotionally, mentally. If it is a prayer for what we need for the health of our relationships with the people around us, if it is a prayer not only for physical bread, but as the early church believed it was, if it is also a prayer for our spiritual bread, a bread which nourishes our souls and leads us unto eternal life, if it is also a prayer for all of those things, if this is true, then we need to be praying it with a little more than minimum effort or reflection. We need to be praying it with a little more than minimum effort or reflection. Because if not all of us have faced the possibility of lacking physical daily bread, which, which actually may be more common in our world than we think it is, but if we've not all had to face that fear, 
Certainly, we have all had to face need, need of some kind, need for physical health, need for emotional and mental health, need for relational health, need for spiritual health. It is for all of these things that we pray. Every time we say, give us this day our daily bread, give us everything we need, Holy God. Or in the words of a, a saint of one of the first churches I ever served, Miss Jefferson, give us just such a blessing as you see us standing in need of today, Holy God. Meet our needs. And we all know that saying these words is really easy compared to the to actually entrusting the words to God, to entrusting God to fulfill such a prayer. It's why I chose the companion passage I did for this petition from the Lord's Prayer, this passage from Luke's Gospel, where Jesus says to uh, those around him and says to us, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat. Do not worry about your body, what you will wear. Do not worry about these things. Well, that ought to be easy enough, right? Sure it is. Just don't worry. You know, you know what is the inarguable number one way to ensure that somebody worries? Tell them not to worry. It's like telling someone on a diet not to think about food. Just don't worry. Oh, of course I won't. Do not worry, says Jesus. Do not worry. Now, I want to get something out of the way uh, rather quickly, and that is that this is not an invitation to sloth. We still have to do our part. Consider the, the examples Jesus gave. The ravens, the ravens still have to get out of the nest. <laughs> they still have to go and get the food. They still have to build nests so that they can continue the species. They've got their work to do. The lilies, too, have things to do. They have to turn their faces to the sun, their leaves to the sun. They have to reach their roots deep down into the soil for nourishment. They, the ravens, in other words, and the lilies have things to do. They have their part to play. But they don't worry about the rest because God provides the rest. The same is true for us. We have our part to play but we must trust God to do the rest. You have perhaps heard the story about the man on the roof during the flooding and a boat comes by to take him to safety. No, God's going to take care of me, he says. A second boat comes by. Nope, God's going to take care of me. A third boat. Nope, God's going to take care of me. Finally, the floods do rise high enough to sweep him away to his death and he goes to heaven and he says to God, why didn't you help me? And God says, I sent you three boats. We must play our part. Certainly, yes, we entrust God to do God's work, but we must do ours. So this is not an invitation to sloth, but it is an invitation to a different way of being, a different perspective from which to live, an invitation to a way of being in relationship to the challenges of our lives, to the needs of our lives, to the crises of our lives, a different way of being in relationship to the people around us and, and, a, and a way of being in relationship to God, God's self. And the clue to that relationship comes in the question that Jesus asked in the middle of this passage. Can you, ask Jesus, can you by worry add a single hour to your span of life? If you worry just hard enough, can you add an hour to your span of life? And of course, the answer is no. The question might also be approached in a different way from a different angle. We might also ask, can you by working, can you by working, working real hard, diligently, striving, giving it all you got, can you by working prevent every possible need? Can you prevent every possible challenge or crisis? Can you prevent every brokenness in every relationship of your life? The answer, of course, is no. We cannot work hard enough to prevent any of that. So if it's true that both of these things are true, we can't add one single hour to our lives by worrying. And no matter how hard we work, we can't prevent every single crisis or need or challenge in our lives. If, those, if both those things are true, then what do we do? Well, our task is 
that we do, like the ravens and the lilies, we do what we were created to do. And what were we created to do? Jesus tells us in this passage, toward the end of the passage, Jesus says, here's what you do. You strive for God's kingdom. In other words, you strive for God's will to be done in your life and in the world. You strive to be faithful in all you do. We strive to be faithful to God's kingdom and God's will in all of our work, in all of our play, in all of our relationships with each other and with God. We strive to be faithful to the kingdom. In all of life, we do our part. And then we entrust God to do what God has promised to do. We entrust God's work to God. Because, as Jesus also tells us in this passage, when we strive for the kingdom of God, what's the other, what's the, 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 the next part of that sentence at the end of the passage? As we strive for the kingdom of God, all these other things will be given to us as well. In other words, we do our part and God will do God's part. We can put it another way by saying we seek to do what we can do and what we should do. And we earnestly and honestly pray that God will do the rest. Give us this day, we pray, our daily bread. Give us this day whatever we need for this day. Give us this day all that we need for this day. And we pray that not with minimum effort or reflection, but we pray it with maximum trust and commitment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now turn our hearts to God in prayer. Uh, this week, the prayer comes from a Lenten prayer of intercession uh, from Reverend Well, <laughs> I lost my place. But it does come from a prayer of intercession for the Lenten season from Reverend John Ames. Let us turn now to God in prayer. Eternal God, you feed the hungry and you satisfy the thirsty. You befriend the lonely and you travel with those who are desperate. You comfort those who mourn. In other words, holy God, you give us what we need. You give us this day our daily bread, whatever that bread is. We have no needs that you cannot meet. You lift us up when we are depressed and your power humbles us when we are proud. Your courage strengthens us when we are afraid and your peace calms us when we are in battle. Your faithfulness is no accident. And our faith in you is not born of chance. We test you at every turn. We bargain with you, tempt you, abandon you, blame you. Yet you continue to be our God. Your patience is a match for your faithfulness. You understand the pain that drives us to despair. You understand the child who goes another way, the parent who will not let a child grow up, the spouse who rejects us, the friend who drinks to ruin the partner who dies. You know us. You understand us. You love us. Your love for us is demonstrated in that while we were yet sinners, while we were totally unworthy of your love, you loved us. And you demonstrated that love in the most vivid way possible. We thank you for love and we pray for a greater capacity to love you and others. We thank you for the intimate love between two people. For the love that parents have for their children and children have for their parents. We thank you for friendship. For loving relationships with all sorts of people. For hugs and embraces. For smiles and laughter. 
for shared sorrow and tears. Give us, Holy God, a greater sense of beauty, the beauty of a spring morning, of the first tiny glimpses of purple and yellow in our flower beds, of children playing, of two lives grown old together. Bless your church today as it continues to struggle to make ancient truth relevant to new times and new problems. Especially we pray your blessing upon churches around us, our neighboring congregations who like us are striving for your kingdom. We pray also for those to whom we are closest, whose burdens we bear the most obviously, members of our families, and to the family of this congregation who are sick, especially those we named before the service. Keep us as a family of worship and service in the name of the one who calls us to follow him, Jesus Christ our Lord, who bids us join in the prayer, the family prayer, which he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we leave this time of worship, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.